Hi, Matt McAleer, Director of Equity Strategies, Cumberland Advisors, February 18th, just after the close. With the Moose, another action-packed week. I'll tell you, Moose, physically, I feel fine. Mentally, I'm tired. Been a roller coaster. A and that's something I just want to discuss briefly. It doesn't get focused on enough about how you have to keep yourself emotionally in shape to successfully trade any kind of market. Because the ups and downs, whether you're just grinding higher or lower, or like I like to say, ripping and dipping, takes a toll on you emotionally. And it's very important to be able to step back and keep a clear head in terms of how you allocate your capital. So what are we looking at this week? And we're going to jump over to fixed income in a moment. But on the equity side, we've taken that drop down to just north in the indices of those January 27th lows. So we've had that good move off Jan 27 and have pulled back in the broad indices to right above it. What do we look for as portfolio managers and traders? Because there's all sorts of information in a market. What I'm trying to pay attention to here is what sectors, industries, and indices are trading at a significantly higher level than they were on January 27th. Right, so what we're trying to find is that divergence. What's trading better? They're going to be our next leaders in the up leg. I know it's attractive to jump in and buy names that have been hit 15, 20, 25 percent in two trading days. That's a dangerous game to play because you have to turn over the whole trading base. You have to go from people that are getting hurt to people that are looking at it as an opportunity and that takes time. Normally it takes weeks if not months. I like to try to focus in a weaker market with the names that are hanging in and exhibiting real relative strength. And that's tended to be still, John, in the value areas. Absolutely. We, I look back at some of the names that we hold in tactical trend. What's working and what's not working? I'm a sucker for biotech. I just love the industry. We don't own a ton of it, but I've bought it a little bit this week. Biotech's gotten crushed, right. and we had a piece. Bought a little bit. That's really the only foray I'll make into a beaten down area. And it got beaten down. Where I, where I prefer to play is in some of the names that hang in there well, the Berkshires, the JP Morgans. Uh, look across, even if it's going to be in tech, which has really gotten clobbered. You look at a Microsoft that from a relative standpoint is hanging in there. Right. I'd rather try to fight the battle with those names than chase Roku down 25% and, and try to guess if it's a bottom. The, the mistakes that I've made in the past and I think can easily be made today by myself and any trader, is thinking every cycle is the same. Roku, and I'm picking on them just because they were in the news today. There, you, we could talk about Facebook. We could talk about any of them that took hard dips. They are now, let's talk about Roku, facing a different environment than a year and two years ago. They're facing higher rates in a scenario where they're not a proven profitable cash flow company. Right. So we have, to, we have to be aware of that, and not every dip is a viable dip. Right. And at the same time, some of that stay-at-home theme going away a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Cycles are cycles. Right. And it's been a while, and we have to be aware. It's been a while since we've been in that interest rate cycle that's going to move consistently higher. And right. we've talked about 2004, 2006, what worked. You know, you needed to be a value bent. Guess what else worked? International. Right. Guess what's working this year? International. Uh, emerging markets is flat on the year. Yeah. Developed markets are down, you want to call it 2% right. with the S&P down 75 or 8 So anyway, try to look for what we call dry areas. They trade dry versus wet. And, and it's just areas and stocks that are trading above their recent lows 
when the rest of the broad indices are back to those lows. Right. So. Right. I'll tell you, you know, on the bond side, for weeks we've been on here and talking about how inflation continues to creep higher, how uh, markets are now aware of the Fed moving to raise short-term interest rates next month. Start, they're, they've already started reducing their purchases and will be done next month. And this week, what's the theme? Pow, Putin. And that controlled the markets. And you saw this week the 10-year bond yield went from a 194 to a 192. 30-year bond was unchanged around 224. Up, up much higher in the middle of the week, but the politics controlled the flow this week. Fear, right, John? Fear, That's fear. what you're trying to, and, trying to say, that the fear flowed into the treasuries, into that safety net. Into that safety net. Because if you looked at other bond markets, yields were higher, the same themes. And, and anytime you get a flight to that quality, to treasuries, other markets tend to trade off. That includes munis, includes corporate, spreads higher. We have two graphs, very quick on them, just so you can see the themes play out. The first graph is just the headline consumer price index takes you back prior to COVID. And as you can see, right around past the election of 2020, starts to shoot higher and it's continued higher. We think it eventually slows down later this year. In the other graph, you can see the 10-year Treasury bond as a proxy. That's also took a little longer to turn around, but as you got towards the fall of last year, finally started to take off. It was above 2%, settled back a little bit. We think that probably continues as well. But from a portfolio action standpoint, what do we know? We know that, for example, municipal bonds that were at 2% back around the beginning of November are now at 3% or 3% plus. We're embracing some of that and starting to buy some longer bonds that we haven't done in well over a year and a half. And the thought process there is, is not that three compares great to a, you know, a run rate of, of 7%, 6% inflation, but what it is, is it, it is a level that we haven't seen. And if you think that inflation eventually does come down and we do that, we want to start to embrace some of these higher rates with the idea that eventually inflation dips below there because um, you know, you're in this for the longer haul and this is total return bond management. Yeah, total return bond management and still the fact that bonds can offer a ballast and in a volatile overall market. Very true and I would just say as you mentioned, you want to own the good names, that's true in equities. It's also true in bonds. So. If you're buying longer term municipal bonds, what do we want to own? We want to own solid general obligation, essential service bonds, water, sewer, transportation, things of that nature uh, that are going to be necessary and, uh, and not fool around with some of the stuff on the fringe. Yeah, some of that stuff on the fringe will be affected more by credit becoming weaker, spreads widening. Right, so, exactly. Uh, that's great information, John. Remember, in it, whether you are in it, an equity investor, a fixed income investor, a balanced investor. Just understanding that when you look in the mirror, you are often your own worst enemy when it comes to trading. We talk about that all the time. Understand that not everybody's going to get every trade right. You're not, we're not. You've got to be able to get past that, think straight, if you're having trouble with your, with your portfolio, there's nothing wrong with raising some cash. Let you breathe a little bit, let you look at the market a little bit differently. So in terms of next week, keep in mind Monday, markets are closed for President's Day. So it's a four-day week with a three-day gap of Russia and Ukraine over the weekend. Right. So we may have to have said it the last few weeks, right? We have to have our helmets on. So. Well, everybody enjoy the weekend. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comments are welcome. We try to return, uh, return with an answer on comments on, on YouTube. And enjoy the weekend. We'll see you next Friday.